description. Teacher is saying and in the studios. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, as you can see from the background, I'm going to introduce you to the reformer. So I'm going to include some common mistakes that people make during class so that you can avoid them. Also, if you haven't been on the reformer before, I have some tips for you to get you ready for the first ever class. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so quickly about the structure of the reformer, just to let you know because different brands of reformers are built a little differently. So I'm just gonna be talking about this particular one, which is the Balanced Body Pilates Allegro. Starting with the foot bar, which is the black part here, you can easily move it up and down by pressing the buckles down to the sides like so. And make sure when you stick it in the holes here, you stuck it tight and properly. So if you need to, yank it a little bit like this to make sure it's secure. Because sometimes you step on it, it's not stuck properly, it might slip down and that can be quite dangerous. Moving on to the length of the foot bar. So you can move it closer towards the carriage, which is the black bed here, or move it further away. So it depends on how tall you are. And you can adjust that by pulling these two balls by the side and moving up and down like this. Same with the foot bar, you want to make sure it's secure by yanking it a little bit. Okay, moving on to this gray platform here, we call it the foot plate. So you usually stand on it during standing exercises. Sometimes we put our hands on it, but that's very rare. So these are called the springs. You can see the colors here. It represents different resistance. And the teacher usually always tells you what colored springs to put on, so you would know. And this one is what we call the carriage. So it's the big bed here that moves up and down. These are the shoulder rests, and this is the head rest. So there's this bit at the back that you can pop up if you need any neck support. But if not, we usually just let it down. So the ropes here are called the straps. The long loops are usually for the feet, and the short loops are usually for the hands. After every exercise that uses a strap, try to put it back onto the pin like so, so that it's easier to find for the next exercise, so that you don't have to fish it on the floor or it might have like slipped away and it gets really hard to find. Moving on to the props, so what I've put on the carriage is what we call a box. This is called a short box setting. And if you turn it like this, this is called a long box setting. Depending on the teacher or the school, we might prop it over the shoulder rest like so, or just keep it right up against the shoulder rest like so. Moving on to the tips for your first ever reformer class. So as you can tell from my introduction before, the setting might be different depending on your height. So I would highly recommend you to go at least five minutes before your class so that you can talk to the teacher, have them make the adjustments for you, and have them introduce the reformer to you again. Because it might not be the same as this one and the setting might be a little bit different. On top of that, arriving early also gives you the benefit of talking to the teacher so you can let them know if you have any injuries or if you're pregnant and let them know that it's your first ever reformer class so that they can make adjustments and modifications along the way. Moving on to my second tip is grip socks. So they might not be compulsory for the studio you're going to, but I would recommend to keep your socks on for sanitary and hygienic reasons. And it's just safer to have grip under your socks for the movements that you're gonna be performing because the carriage moves and it can be quite dangerous if the socks are very slippery. If socks are compulsory, they're usually available for purchase at the studio, but if not, I usually shop mine from Toe Socks or Point Studio, and I'll leave their links in the description box down below. My third tip would be body awareness. It's not something that everybody has, and it takes a little bit of time to build up, so I would highly recommend you to take at least a couple of Pilates mat class before moving on to a reformer class, because during a reformer class, the teacher usually won't demonstrate and you don't have a body to look at. So it's just easier if you already know some of the terms and some of the movements, so the class is easier for you to follow. My final tip is to pay attention, because as I've said before, there's no body to demonstrate during the class and the person next to you might be doing a modification or a progression of the exercise, so you might not be doing the same thing. So the most important thing is to listen to what the teacher is saying and just have fun. The first common mistake is to not have the reformer in the correct setting. So as you can tell, when the carriage is all the way in, the knees are way over my hips. 
in the correct and ideal setting, the hips should sit just below the knees in a 90 degree angle like so. So what I'm actually gonna do is to move the foot bar up slightly so that I have a little bit more space for my hips. And just like that, perfect. The second common mistake is to stand on the moving carriage first during a standing exercise. So I'm just gonna carefully sit on the carriage with one right spring on. As you can tell, the carriage shifts out already. If we're on a lighter spring or if you weren't being careful, it might go out even further and you might fall down. So that can be quite dangerous. So the correct thing to do is to always stand on a stable surface. So for example, this foot plate here, and then place the other foot over to the moving carriage side. The last common mistake has two parts and it all involves having the feet in the strap. So about the first part, sometimes in the long lever position, people bring their legs so low that they're arching their back. You don't want this to happen. So the legs should be at an appropriate height and the lower back should stay down towards the carriage or in a neutral spine position. The second part is when the teacher asks you to take the legs up like this. Sometimes your hamstrings are not flexible enough for your legs to go all the way up and people start to roll the tailbone off like this just to reach a little further. You want to try to keep the tailbone down and have the legs at an appropriate height. So it all depends on how flexible your hamstring is. Some people might have their legs here, some people might have their legs here. It really depends from body to body. All right, you guys, and that is it for my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was helpful and informative. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. And in the description box, you can also find my regular schedule for the reformer class. Give me a like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you next time. Bye.